Okay, next we're going to look at some specific examples in which we're going to use trigonometric substitution to solve an integral. So the first example is the integral of dx over the square root of a squared minus x squared. So this, ant this integral involves a square root of a squared minus x squared. So the first thing we're going to think of is trigonometric substitution. So let's draw our right triangle. this an angle theta okay now now let's identify the hypotenuse so it's the square root of a squared minus x squared so a should be the hypotenuse x is one of the legs and then the square root of a squared minus x squared is the second leg of the right triangle so now that we have our right triangle identified we're going to go through and write down our three main trigonometric relations sine cosine and tangent so sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's x over a. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, and then tangent of theta is equal to x over the square root of a squared minus x squared. So those are our three main trig functions expressed in terms of x. So the base, the simplest one is the, the one that only involves x and so no square root, and that's the one that we differentiate to get the dx. So from this equation, we see that x is equal to a sine of theta, and therefore dx is equal to a cosine of theta d theta. So just differentiating this, sine gives you cosine, so we end up with a cosine of theta d theta like this. Okay, so now let's go and apply the substitution to rewrite this integral in terms of one that only involves theta. Okay, so the dx we replace like this. We just use a cosine of theta d theta. So this integral, the dx is just a cosine of theta d theta. It's divided by, now we have the square root of a squared minus x squared. Well, that's going to show up in this second relation. Um, so the square root of a squared minus x squared will equal a cosine of theta. So from this second relation, we get uh, square root of a, a squared minus x squared, and that's just replaced with a cosine theta. So divided by a cosine of theta, wow, that's a nice, easy integral, just the integral of d theta. a cancels out, cosine of theta cancels out, and we're left with the integral of d theta. So well, we can integrate this, it's equal to theta plus c. Now we substitute back in. So now we solve, so theta, um, when we have a theta by itself, we just want to use the relationship that we use to find the differential. So x is equal to a sine of theta, so theta will equal arc sine of x over a plus c. So altogether we get the integral of dx over the square root of a squared minus x squared is equal to the arc sine of x over a plus c. Now hopefully this should seem familiar um, because the derivative of the arc sine function, derivative of arc sine of x over a is exactly one over the square root of a squared minus x squared. So you might have remembered this from your differentiation rules that hey this is one over square root of a squared minus x squared it looks like that might be the derivative of the arc sine function. So the, but if you don't, didn't remember that, tr uh, trig substitution gave us the answer with you know, relative ease. So there's the integral, and it's equal to the arc sine of x over a. So pretty neat technique, right? Because if you don't, didn't remember the, the, der the derivative of arc sine of x, and you're just looking at this integral saying, how on, on earth am I going to integrate this? This substitution makes that integral very simple. It's just the integral of d theta. And then once you have the answer, which is theta, so that's the antiderivative in terms of theta, you go back and start with this relation and then just solve for theta. So if x is equal to a sine theta, you know, x over a was equal to sine of theta, and theta is equal to the arc sine of x over a. And then there's the answer. Our second integral, we're going to do pretty much the same thing, except I'm going to switch positions of x and a. So this is going to become the integral of dx over the square root of x squared minus a squared instead of a squared minus x squared. So let's see what happens in this case. 
Well, we're going to need a different right triangle. So let's draw our right triangle. Okay, x is the hypotenuse because it's x squared minus a squared. Since a is not the hypotenuse, that puts a in the adjacent position. And then the square root of x squared minus a squared as the opposite. Now let's write down our three uh, trig identities or three trig relations for sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Okay, so not as so right away it's it's these relations are not going to be as easy as the last case but let's see what we can do so cosine of theta is a over x so from this we see that x is equal to a secant theta so here i cross multiply the x comes up i kick the cosine theta down one over cosine is secant so x is equal to a secant theta dx is equal to a secant theta tangent theta so that's my substitution, and these are kind of my, uh, my key or my Rosetta Stone for translating back and forth between functions of x and functions of theta. Now I have to just use these uh, relations to re-express this integral entirely in terms of theta. So dx becomes, oops, d theta. dx is a secant theta, tangent theta, d theta. So dx is replaced with a secant theta, tangent theta d theta divided by now the square root of x squared minus a squared is equal to a times tangent of theta so divided by a tangent theta so the a's cancel and then tangents of theta cancel so this integral becomes the integral of secant theta d theta which looks nice and simple, except what function differentiates to secant of theta? In other words, what is the antiderivative of secant of theta? So that's a good question. What is the antiderivative of secant theta? Well, let's find out. So let's see, we don't need this anymore. So I'm going to get rid of this. Uh, and then this, I'm just going to move aside a little bit. I'm going to move it down here. And then clean this up. I guess we don't need any of this now that we know where it comes from. And I'm going to take this and move it back up here like that. Okay, so we're going to need this later. We're going to need these relations when we re-express the antiderivative, which is initially in terms of theta, back in terms of x. But before we get there, we have to integrate the secant of theta d theta. Now, that's a really cool integral because what we do is instead of integrating secant of theta d theta, let's multiply secant of theta by secant theta plus tangent theta divided by secant theta plus tangent theta. Now clearly I haven't done anything because I just multiplied this by something divided by itself, so this is the same integral because this factor right here is equal to one. It's like something divided by something. Now let's distribute in the secant theta. So this is the equivalent to secant squared theta plus secant theta tangent theta over secant theta plus tangent theta. Now you might be tempted to simplify this, but you don't want to simplify this because we just unsimplified it. Right? We started off with just the integral of secant theta, and then we unsimplified it to this by just some sort of special insight that I have which you'll see why this is a nice thing to do in a moment. And this is, this is a trick. This is just something that you have to know how to do um, to solve this integral. So uh, somebody really smart in the 1700s figured this out, and he told all his friends, his friends, their friends told their friends, and so forth. Somebody told me, I'm telling you, that's how it works. So don't worry if you, if you say, how would I possibly know to multiply this by secant theta plus tangent theta divided by secant theta plus tangent theta? You wouldn't, and you shouldn't. So somebody clever figured this out, and it works, so that's how we know how to do this for this specific integral. Um, so anyway, why is this so nice that, this, that somebody thought to do this? Well, 
In the numerator, we have secant squared theta, and we have secant theta tangent theta. Now we know the antiderivatives of both of those. In fact, secant squared theta is just the derivative of tangent theta. Meanwhile, let me use a different color, secant theta tangent theta is the derivative of secant theta. So by doing this, the numerator is exactly the derivative of the denominator. So this becomes, so now we can use a u substitution. So if we set u is equal to secant theta plus tangent theta, then du becomes derivative of secant is secant tan. So secant theta, tangent theta, derivative of tangent is secant squared theta. So du is this times the d theta. So this integral just becomes the integral of du over u, which is ln of u plus c, which is therefore equal to ln of secant theta plus tangent theta plus c. So if you already, and you may, if you've seen this before, I just went through these steps in case you hadn't seen it before so you would know where it comes from. So the upshot is that the integral of secant theta d theta is equal to ln of the absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta and then plus c. So that's a kind of a cool little, they must have been very excited when they saw that trick because that, that works out very nicely. So integral of secant theta d theta is the ln of secant theta plus tangent theta and then plus c. Little extra for you to th think about. So can you figure out the integral of cosecant theta? So use the same sort of trick except that you're using cosecants and cotangents instead of secants and tangents. See if you can figure out the integral of cosecant theta on your own. So anyway, the integral of secant theta is equal to ln of secant theta plus tangent theta. Now we have to substitute back in. So that's why I saved these from earlier. So here we have these relations and we want to substitute back in. So we're going to replace secant theta with a function of x and we're going to replace tangent theta with a function of x. So ln secant theta is the reciprocal of this. So if cosine theta is a over x, secant theta will be x over a. And then tangent theta is the square root of x squared minus a squared over a plus c. So there it is. So our integral My equal signs are very amazingly identical. Two separate equal signs overlap. So there's the antiderivative, which is completely fine, except suppose that you found, were to find out that the antiderivative, maybe this antiderivative is in a table somewhere, or you, 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 know, you find it in some reputable source, and they, they, the source tells you that the antiderivative is ln of x plus the square root of x squared minus a squared plus c. And, and this is indeed the correct answer. Wow, well, what, where did we go wrong? Or did we go wrong? Actually, we didn't go wrong. These are both correct answers, but yet they look very different. I mean, when we divide something by, when we divide x by a, we get a different function, don't we? Well, the reason they're both correct answers is, well, let's take a look at the first one. The first one is equivalent to ln of x plus square root of x squared minus a squared over a, which is equal to the ln of x plus square root of x squared minus a squared minus the ln of a. So they're both correct. The difference is that the value, the specific value of c that you have would be different. So this function is related to this function by simply an additive constant. And when you just add a constant to your antiderivative, you obtain a different equally valid antiderivative. So they're both correct answers. So in fact, you might even want, in this case, preferably, you would just write this for your antiderivative. Why bother with x over a and square root of x squared minus a squared over a? Just write this out, right? And especially if you have a definite integral, so let's say you somebody was asking to compute zero to a, 
Well, this is, might be easier to compute than with the dividing by A and having to worry about all that. So anyway, those are two basic examples of trigonometric substitution.